Hello, welcome to the self-learning platform by Dr. Shishma Singh. Today we start Unit 14, Communist Thought. I'm Roy and EMS Namuzri Pad. We are continuing EMS Namuzri Pad, the Communist Theoretician. And we start with topic Marxist-Leninist Theory. According to Namutripat, the First World War marked the beginning of the end of the capitalist domination over the nation-state system in different parts of the world. With the victory of the communism in the October Revolution in Russia, the history of humanity witnessed for the first time the victory of the working class over the capitalist structures of a country. The everlasting spread of the Russian Revolution influenced not only the Eastern Europe but also a major part of the international system. It changed the very political map of the world from capitalism to socialism. While discussing about the crisis of the capitalism and Marxist-Leninist theory, Namutripad said, in these crises, a great part not only of the existing products, but also the previously created production forces are periodically destroyed. In these crises, there breaks out an epidemic that in all earlier epochs would have seemed an absurdity the epidemic of overproduction. Society suddenly finds itself put back into a momentary barbism. It appears as if of a mind, a universal war of devastation had cut off the supply of every means of subsistence. Industry and commerce seems to be destroyed. And why? Because there is too much civilization, too much means of subsistence, too much industry, too much commerce. Marx discussed about this crisis in his classical work Capital. Not only both Marx and Angels discussed about the recurring cyclical crisis, steadily leading to its inevitable destruction, but also pointed out that the active force which arises within the womb of capitalism will surely destroy the capitalism itself. Marx said, not only has the bourgeois forged the weapons that bring death to itself, it has called into existence the men who are to wield those weapons, the modern working class, the proletarian. According to Namudripad, the formation of the socialist camp comprising several nations would ultimately lead to a virtual end of the colonial system. While analyzing the central features of the world political scene, he cautioned us to be aware of the weaknesses and difficulties of the countries of the socialist world. He said that the socialist world is not an Iceland in the ocean of humanity. It coexists with the capitalist world. While it is possible for the socialism to exert its influence on the capitalist world, it in its turn faces the dangers of the penetration of the influence of the capitalist world. The present-day crisis 
in the capitalist world is bound to have its impact on the socialist world therefore one has to be careful to see that economic planning proceeds on the well tested principles of balanced and proportionate development he emphasized that the long term prospective of the socialist development programs should be based on the step by step nationalization collectivization and social control of all the means and instruments of production including land he cautioned both state and the party leadership not to neglect the supreme task of fighting the evil influences of alien class ideology which appeared in various manifestations including the iron grip of religion on the minds of the people this analysis of namudri paz shows now to what extent his philosophy has become relevant in the contemporary society now we move to the next point on caste conflict namudri paz said that destruction of the age old village system and the development of the new capitalism by the british administration resulted in two apparently contradictory features in the indian society and politics the emergence of working class as a class and the destruction of the unity of the working class and the toiling people as evidenced in the increasing conflict between backward and forward castes these tensions were built into the national movement in which the leaders often highlighted the revival of the age old indian civilization and culture thereby emphasizing division of society into a hierarchical system of caste he talked about the two contradictory features of the indian politics the growing unity of working class against the bootlingam report and the industrial relations bill in 1973 and the growing conflict between the backward and forward communities he advised us to have a proper understanding of the nature and depth of these two crises and to resist oppression that acts as one of the contributing factors giving rise to tensions and conflict among higher and lower castes he referred to the known brahmin movements in different parts of the country it is important to remember that the struggle waged by the millions of people belonging to the hitherto oppressed caste and communities has become now an integral part of the struggles for secular democracy it would therefore he be rational to conclude that the demand for reservation made by the backward communities would be a just demand now let us discuss on the next topic national unity one of the important aims of freedom struggle was to bring about unity among various castes religious communities and linguistic groups under the banner of revolt against the british administration the struggle also highlighted the removal of evil systems such as untouchability and inferior status to women the bhavnagar session in 1961 of the congress emphasized on this aspect 
it said under the cover of the political and social activities the old evils of communalism casteism provincialism and linguism have again appeared in some measures communalism which has in the past done so much injury to the nation is again coming into evidence and taking advantage of the democratic apparatus to undermine this unity to encourage reactionary tendencies provincialism and the linguism have also adversely affected the cause for which the congress has been fighting for over decades it is therefore of the utmost important that every effort must be made to remove these evils or the adoption of this resolution was followed by the appointment of the national integration committee namudri pas said that the revivalism of the majority gave a modern secular grab of nationalism to the essentially hindu communalist approach the revivalism of the minority was on the other hand taking an openly communal strand he considered revivalism as a serious threat to the national unity the betrayal of the national burjis in the matter of national language and virtual abandonment of the democratic approach to the problems of lingua languages and linguistic status has created growing political discontent among the people besides the economic development programs have not been able to remove the disparities among the people increasing powers to the people representatives complete restoration of the fundamental rights of the people removal of anti people measures regional autonomy for the tribal areas equal rights for all citizens irrespective of religion caste and sex free compulsory education up to secondary level people's cultural program and equitable resources distribution among all regions are some of the measures highlighted by him namudri pad was very much critical of the abdominal treatment given to women in the society he said that the society is to be modernized if hindu muslim christian and other women even among the hindus are to be enabled to enjoy privileges of modern monogamous family having equal rights with men the struggle of women as women should be further carried forward that women as an integral part of the toiling classes working classes the peasantry should therefore participate with men in all these movements is also undeniable emphasizing the role of organizations of women he said that these organizations too should realize that their own struggle for equality can be led to successful conclusion only if the common organizations of the working people are strengthened and if they embrace in their ranks both men and women now let us discuss the strategy of indian revolution the draft political resolution prepared by national council of the right communist party 
for their congress held at Cochin in October 1971, emphasized on a left and democratic government at the center with the congress at its head. They officially called it an alliance of left democratic forces inside and outside the Congress. Namudripad was very much critical of this approach. The CPIM gave a call for a struggle against the whole camp of reaction represented by all parties of the ruling classes including and dominated by the ruling Congress party. He advocated for a well-coordinated political struggle against three main enemies of the people, imperialism or foreign monopoly, federalism or all the antiquated socio-cultural economic and political institutions within the country and the rapidly growing monopoly capital with the foreign collaboration. He was empathetic about the proletariat internationalism of the working classes towards the world socialist movement. He said that Indian revolution is an integral part of the process of transition from capitalism to socialism that takes place on a world scale. But this does not mean that India is ripe for this transition. India has to go through another revolution as the main precondition for the transition from capitalism to socialism. Now the next point is Indian history. Namutripaj was of the opinion that although historian claimed to be impartial, objective and interested only in discovering the truth, their work invariably reflects the philosophy of the class they belong to. Some of the historians stand for particular religious communities, regional linguistic and cultural groups or communities. Their writings often reflect their approaches to the problem of history and culture of India. Often, the conflicting views of different historians representing particular schools of history create social tensions and instabilities. He said, historians other than those guided by theory of historical materialism are handicapped by the fact that they do not see the history of human society as one of the man's struggle against nature in the course of which he enters into mutual relations with other members of the society. Nor do they perceive that these mutual reactions become what are known as relations of conflicts between the exploiting and exploited classes. It is indeed unnecessary to look upon the history of all human societies as the history of class struggle. While referring to the study of the history of India, one should begin with the quest for understanding the nature of the pre-British society, its weakness and developments of these weaknesses existing socio-economic structures and political regimes. The political philosophy of EMS Namudripad is indeed a valuable contribution to the growth of social science of the contemporary society. Now in the end, let us look at the summary of the image. 
communist thought in india has its roots in the marxist leninist ideology the communist movement in india though following the marxist tenets steered ahead in the specific indian conditions the early communist before the birth of the communist party of india was anti imperialist that is why they had to undergo imprisonment the cpi in its initial years worked with some effectiveness in organizing the workers and the peasants it witnessed a split in the course of its evolution the cpi and cpim it stood for the establishment of the social list society and sought an imperialist free and exploitation free social internationalism the indian marxist have never been the orthodox followers of the marxism amon roy moved theoretically from marxism to radical humanism while ems namudripad sought in practical terms a modernized developed society in india especially in kerala now we want to wind up this lecture and we have come to the end of the unit thank you so much for your attention